We're going to do one last short whiteboarding video before we start coding just to make absolutely certain that you have the separation clear between between the, the different parts that are going on because it, it's very easy to get confused and then give up. At least that's what I did when I was learning the very first time. We're going to implement WebSockets, which is the native technology. It's native to JavaScript. We'll come back to the docs here in just a little bit. WebSockets is just a precursor for Socket.io, which is going to use the WebSocket API. All right. So we're going to use WebSockets and we're going to have two different players. We're going to have a client and the client is going to be just HTML, JavaScript and CSS. This is where the API lives as we have the WebSocket API. That is the technology that we're interested in actually working with. That's what WebSockets comes from is JavaScript has the ability inside the browser to connect to a server. Right, so let's say we create a connection. We have to have somebody to connect to. That by itself is not enough. So this is part one. Part one is the WebSocket API, is the JavaScript portion, okay? We have to also have some kind of server to field those requests. And this is going to be a node server of some kind for us. It could also be Python or C Sharp or Ruby or Java or whatever implementation that you want to use. But the server does not know about this. This is going to be a completely different thing. We are going to use the WebSocket module initially and then we will switch over to the Socket IO module. Okay? Now, this is a very important distinction to make. These two things, Node and HTML, they are totally different things. Ha ha, I bet you didn't know that. No, I mean, of course you knew that, but, but you're going to have to keep that straight, that WebSockets has two pieces. It has the client and it has the server. We've got two things going. This is a node process. This is a node server that's going to handle requests as they come in. Node and or Linux over here does not know about WebSocket API, which is new to JavaScript. Right? Hey, JavaScript came out with this cool new API where you can connect your browser to to a network socket on the computer, right? A network socket with physical and link and network and transport and application. Isn't that exciting? We can pass back and forth. The server has no idea that WebSocket API exists. It just knows about sockets. It just knows how to deal with the transmission of network traffic. So something has to act as a translator here because this thing, this connection between the two of them, is going to use a protocol called WS. And again, you'll see that here in a little bit. Instead of HTTP, which is at the beginning of most of your URLs, we're going to connect to a WS protocol. Well, the WS protocol needs something over here to be able to translate between the WebSocket way of communicating and the server way of communicating. In our case, it will be Node. That is going to be either the WebSocket module or the Socket.io module, okay? So two very distinct pieces. We're going to have an HTML page with some JavaScript and some CSS and so on, and that's going to use the JavaScript API. And we're also going to have to make a node server so that when a connection gets issued, we actually have something to connect with over here, all right? The server doesn't know about WebSockets. It only knows about sockets. It only knows how network traffic works. The node module here is going to be the go-between or the interpreter between the socket and the JavaScript WebSocket. 